Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you love chicken chow mein, you are gonna flip out at this recipe. When I get it from the Chinese place, sometimes I really don't like it because it, the chicken is like slimy. I can't explain it, but this is perfect. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Arlene. So you are gonna absolutely love this recipe. I was in such a mood for Chinese um, chicken chow mein. But if you order it from the Chinese place, it is so many points. Why? I don't know, but it is. So I came up with a recipe. I have made this before. It's absolutely delicious. I actually like it better than the Chinese restaurants. And um, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Now, if you want to grab a pen and a piece of paper so you can write down all the ingredients that you're going to need. First off, I have two whole chicken breasts that I cut up into strips and took all the fat and everything off of it. In here, I have one tablespoon of onion powder and one tablespoon of garlic powder. And we're just gonna season our chicken with that. I have some salt I'm gonna add a little bit. If you have white pepper, use white pepper, but I don't have white pepper, so I'm just gonna use some black pepper a little bit. You can put as much salt and pepper to taste as you want. And then I have reduced soy sauce, uh, reduced sodium soy sauce. And I'm just gonna put a couple little dabs. That's all. That was probably like a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half. Then I have here um, two and a half teaspoon, uh, two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. So we're just gonna mix this up till it's all incorporated. I'm actually gonna do it with my hands, and then I'll wash my hands really good because I want to make sure that that onion powder and that garlic powder gets all over the chicken with that cornstarch. Now everything in this recipe is zero points except for the oil that we're going to use in the pan and the cornstarch. I think it's going to come out, I'll probably get like four servings out of this. So I think it's going to be about four or five uh, points per serving, which is not bad. And that includes the brown rice that I'm going to put it over because the brown rice is zero. So I'm just going to let this sit and like marinate for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then we'll start cooking everything. So I'll show you what's next. And now we are going to start doing our vegetables. So this is the Napa cabbage that I've taken the leaves off. I left some on because I'm going to be using this to make a nice cabbage soup. I don't need it all for this dish. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little bit of these at the end off. I don't want to use that. You can if you want, it's totally fine. And I'm just gonna cut across. That piece looks like it's no good. See a little bit brown there, I don't want that. Now this looks like it's gonna be a lot of cabbage, but it's actually going to wilt down to almost nothing when we're cooking it. Now this recipe is gonna be very, very low in points. 
because the only thing that's going to have points actually is the cornstarch that I'm putting in it. I got to check the soy sauce I have. I have low sodium soy sauce. I don't know if that's going to be points with how much I'm going to be using. Oh, and the oil. So the oil that I'm going to be putting in the pan and the cornstarch is the only thing that's going to have points in this recipe. This Napa cabbage is beautiful. I love Napa cabbage. The leaves are so nice and big, you can even make a nice stuffed cabbage with it. I haven't made stuffed cabbage in a while. My husband loves that. So all this just goes in the bowl. Then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so the next step is I sprayed this pan with my olive oil spray all, all around it. And then I added one half teaspoon uh, one half tablespoon of pure vegetable oil. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to heat this up, get it nice and hot, and we're going to add our carrots that I julienne. And that's about, I would say, I believe I did six baby carrots. Then we're going to add our onion. That's one one yellow onion, or if you have a white onion, you can use that. And then I have like four big cloves of garlic that I just slice. I did not put it in my chopper and chop it up fine. I want it to be bigger pieces. So I'm just going to keep stirring this and let this cook down a little bit for about five minutes. I still want all of my vegetables when I'm eating my chow mein to be nice and crispy. So I don't want everything fully cooked. I'm going to let, like I said, this is going to go for about four to five minutes only. So I'm going to let this go. I'll shut the camera off and I'll show you what goes in next. Okay, so that's been going for about four or five minutes. And I have it set on number two. So my, the way my oven go, you know, my stove, it goes low, two, four, six, eight, high. So I have it on low. I don't want all of this to actually brown and get brown. I want it to stay nice and white. That's my rice that's done in my Instapot. Now the next thing we're going to put in is bok choy that I sliced on an angle. And I'm not going to use all of this. This was a small thing of bok choy. But I'm going to be making myself some cabbage soup. And I want to save some of my bok choy for that. So the bok choy goes in, and that's going to wilt down very quickly. The next thing I'm going to add is my Napa cabbage, which I cut. And this, it, I know it looks like a lot, but it's going to wilt down to like nothing. So we're just going to put that Napa cabbage in. And you really want to use Napa cabbage. You don't want to use regular green cabbage. I'll put this up a little bit. And we're just going to keep stirring this. And getting all that cabbage. Now this is going to go for about a good five minutes. Four or five minutes until all that Napa cabbage is wilted down. And you just want to keep stirring it. Now, if you have a wok, please do this in a wok. It just makes life so much easier. I'm going to take my spray. I'm trying to keep the oil content down. So, so far we only used 
um, a half a tablespoon of the vegetable oil. Because we have to count the oil in this recipe. So we're going to keep stirring this. Let it go for about four or five minutes. And then there's two last things that are going to go in. Which is your celery that's sliced on an angle. And your scallion that's sliced on an angle. Okay, that's still going. But to this, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Adding some black pepper. If you have white pepper, use the white pepper, like I said. Because you just want to season up these vegetables a little bit. See how much that cabbage wilted down already? Now we're going to add in, this is like two long ribs of celery sliced on the angle. And I like my celery to be nice and crispy, so this isn't going to really cook that much longer. You want all your vegetables nice and crispy. Like if I take out the carrot, it still has a beautiful crunch to it. Now, that was two scallions cut on the angle. Look at how beautiful this is looking already. Taste the piece of this cabbage and see if it needs any more salt and pepper. It's really good. Now, this is going to get juice in the bottom. See all that juice from those vegetables? You want to make sure you keep that juice. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be adding um, just a little bit of water. About a quarter of a cup of water. I might need more towards the end, but for right now, that's good. All right, so I really don't want this cooking anymore. I'm going to transfer it to a big bowl, and then we're going to cook the chicken. So this is perfect. Okay, I transferred all of my vegetables into a big bowl. And it's still steaming, so that's continuing to cook with the steam. See how hot that is? See the steam coming up? So that's still continuing to cook. I don't want it, I don't want to cover it because I don't want it getting too mushy. So now I'm gonna spray this pan again. Put that on low. I'm going to add one tablespoon of vegetable oil. And this is a half a tablespoon, so i got to put two. This pan was really hot. See how that oil, that spray got very brown very quick? Now we're going to just dump in our chicken. Moving it around. Okay. 
And I have that on low. I'll just wipe my stove here a little bit. I'm just gonna continue to cook this until all of the chicken is cooked through. Okay, so that chicken's cooking up nicely. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some more water, just about enough to get all those scrapings off the bottom of the pan. vegetables with all those juices I'm mix that all up nice put that up a little higher Once that starts to boil, because if you can see how much juice is in there, that juice is going to thicken up really nice from that cornstarch that was on the chicken. And you just want to make sure you get that scraped off the bottom. If you want it a little bit thicker, you can always add some more cornstarch mixed with water and add it in to make it thicker but I think this is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna give it a quick taste and see if it needs any more seasoning. Mm. Guys, it's so good. And besides that little bit of oil, one and a half tablespoons and that cornstarch everything else is very very healthy for you taste the piece of this chicken mm. I'm telling you better than the Chinese place I love it Vegetables are still crunchy. Oh, mm, mm, mm. I'm going to shut that off. If you wanted to, you could add mushrooms to this. I don't like mushrooms. You could add really any vegetable you wanted. But when you get Chinese in the Chinese restaurant, it's usually bok choy, celery, napa cabbage, onions. That's basically what it is, and the garlic. All right, this looks perfect, you guys. So I'm going to get my rice. I'm going to plate it up, and I'm going to show you how I serve it. And so stay tuned and I will be right back. All right, guys. So my entire huge pot, this can feed a whole family. There is so much in here. This whole entire pot of chicken chow mein is eight points. The one and a half tablespoons of vegetable oil is six points. And the two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch is two points. So that makes all of this eight points. 
Now I'm just going to move this over here. Now I have my one cup of brown rice, which is zero points. And I'm just going to put some of this delicious, oh my God, you guys, look at this. Look at this homemade chicken chow mein. You cannot get any better than that. You want to get a little bit of that juice on there. That is a lot of food, my friends. That is huge. I'm going to add a little bit of soy sauce. You need the soy sauce on it, guys. So even if you have just one packet of soy sauce from the actual Chinese place, make sure you put that on. And... I buy these wonton strips. They're so good. They're from... Oh, I ripped the thing off there. Something gourmet. Let me see if it's on the back. Oh, fresh gourmet. Wonton strips. They're absolutely delicious. And two tablespoons of them is only one point. So I'm just going to put them on top. Because you need some crispy noodles with your chow mein. Now, I'm just going to give this a taste. Grab a noodle. Mmm. Wow. I like it so much better than the regular Chinese. It is freaking delicious. This deserves a happy dance. This deserves a happy dance. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The chicken. So tender. Those vegetables are still a little crunchy. The rice. The soy sauce. And then you have those nice crispy noodles. Oops. You have those nice crispy noodles with that. You guys, absolutely delicious. So, if this whole entire pot is eight points, let's see if I can. If this whole entire pot is eight points, I'm definitely going to get four servings out of this. So there's three more servings left in here, and I have the one big serving on my plate. So that's two points per serving, plus one point for my crispy wonton noodles. So this whole entire plate of delicious, I'm not kidding you, you guys, delicious white meat chicken chow mein is only three points. And... I put such little bit of the soy sauce on that I'm not even counting that. If you want to count your soy sauce, if your soy sauce is any points, but by all means. But right here, this plate is only three points. Well, I'm going to enjoy this for lunch. I'm probably going to have it again for dinner. If you guys like this recipe, please give me a thumbs up. Really helps out my channel. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscription button. Please hit the notification bell. And I will see everybody in the next video, which will be next week. I might be going upstate to work with my cousin Kelly this weekend. Um, <clears throat> uh, at the restaurant where she works because they're doing a wedding on Saturday and they might need help. So I might drive all the way upstate just to uh, do the wedding on Saturday and then come back on Sunday. That's why I wanted to get a video in today. So yeah, please make this, please make sure you leave your vegetables nice and crispy. The recipe will be in the description box below, but make sure that even if you have to rewatch it, do it in the steps that I do the vegetables when you're sauteing them. So make sure you do it in the, that particular order. So if you have to go back and watch it again and say, okay, the carrots and the onions first, then the garlic, then the bok choy, 
then the, uh, what was next? Oh, the Napa cabbage, then the celery and the scallions. Just make sure you write it down and make sure you follow the recipe to a T to get exactly what I'm eating right here. All right, guys, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. I'm going to enjoy my lunch, you guys. Everybody have a great, 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 great weekend. I know it's only Wednesday, but have a good weekend, and I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.